we're absolutely fucked. I've actually been in your company for fucking 15 minutes and I'm already thinking I'm coming down with something. Sorry, man. No, you're not. Contagious handsomeness. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, man. <laughs> take it, man. <laughs> I feel like we're going to be on very different levels today. I'm just going to be like, and you're already vibing. I'm going to vibe out, man. You see the, uh, obviously COP26 is happening. You see the Zambian president's here, and uh, he went to Costco. <laughs> yeah. And like, they just bought loads of like Glenn Fiddick and stuff. <laughs> he uh, came out with like three trolleys worth, but it was like one of the like, members of like the parliament or whatever it is they call it over there uh-huh. like retweeted it and they're like what is our actual stance here <laughs> is it just glenn fiddick ed t-shirts and vibes and i was like that is so funny like and then the big man met um he met fashion sakala jr at place right. for rangers <laughs> amazing because he scores a hat trick at the weekend <laughs> Just like, fucking why not? He's like, we're here to solve the climate crisis, and also we are the people. <laughs> <laughs> They're just over here living. I've yeah. honestly avoided fucking everything to do with that cop shit, man. I have no idea what's happening. Like, there's people here. There's people here. That's there's people sure. here doing nothing. No. <laughs> so cool. Like, I've been seeing that, making um, shit misery for two weeks. I've been seeing that like a lot of the like, what do you call them? Like sponsors and stuff, so like Unilever, and I can't remember a couple of them, but like uh-huh. they're all bad cunts that oh, just like real bad, yeah, that have contributed to the environmental crisis mm-hmm. heavily because they're massive polluters. The other one was like mad into deforestation, just cut down all the fucking things. The other one used loads of palm oil, and they were just like, take the train more. <laughs> Take the train more. It's your fault. Do your part. Do listen, your part. Listen to two Ride fucking idiots that don't know anything. Don't use your car. Use your feet. Don't blame the billionaires that have profited off the backs of labour and destroying the planet for literal decades. Get the bus. Nah, fuck it. Go outside with a can of deodorant and just go. <laughs> fuck the ozone layer. <laughs> It's all about the vibes. <laughs> as long as we're all smelling like Lynx Africa, mm. we're good. <laughs> mm. Just fucking living your entire high school life. Just fucking soaking yourself in that shit. I saw someone that I used to go to school with. I'm pretty sure it was someone I used to go to school with. Tweeted the other day. They were like, oh. You got here. Oh, thanks. I'll get it. Uh, the only reason I came out is trans so I don't get a Lynx Africa box set for Christmas. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Genuinely love it so much. <laughs> wow, makes me laugh. Just please stop. Um, I know. Uh, it's another episode. It is another episode. 35, maybe? Or 36. Definitely 35. We're in the 30s. 35. I'm going to say it's 35. This is Dead End Friends, the podcast. The podcast where two dudes who don't know anything talk about everything. Um, you find us on all the places. So we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can hit the wee linky link on our bio on Instagram, which is at Dead End Friends Podcast. And that'll take you to all the places that you need to find us. We're also on, obviously, the YouTubes to watch and enjoy. Um, it's been a, I feel like it's actually been a while since we've done this. It hasn't, though. It's been the same. Um, well, no, it's been a few no, extra days. It's been but a wee bit longer. It does. Uh, for some reason, it feels like it, even though nothing has happened in the past. What did we do on the last one? Nobody will remember what we did in the last one. We definitely don't. Oh, <laughs> we spoke about forklifts. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. That was a fun episode. <laughs> that was the fucking like. I had obviously I need to like watch that shit back to like edit it and stuff. Mm-hmm. And even when I was doing like editing the video and then even doing the highlights video, every time I got to that bit, I was fucking full blown belly laughing <laughs> at that shit. <laughs> See, just you trying to describe that if you do this on a forklift and just keep spinning it, you just keep <laughs> fucking turning around. Oh my god, man! <laughs> oh, I love it. I was defeated by the end it of was, it. I watched that episode when it came out. I don't wa- I don't watch this very often, I need to admit. No. Because it's, we- it's weird. I need to edit it, yeah. so I definitely don't watch it, it. it. It's weird just to watch yourself back. I'll listen to our own music, but I can't watch this. <laughs> this is strange. Um, but I watched that episode in anticipation, because I, I, I just remember like leaving your house 
that Thursday and having like sore ribs from <laughs> laughing. I felt so bad because your entire family was sleeping. And but I was just like, we, oh, are we going to wake them up? Oh, we had full blown giggles. Like, it wasn't like pure. Ah! Ah! I was yeah, like, no, that's true. We were like sniggering. It was funny. <laughs> oh, man. That was so good. It was so much fun. It was a good time. Uh, the, but the level will be very different this week because you are sick as a dog and I don't even know why I'm sitting next to you. No. On a, a sofa that's smaller than like the space that we usually have at yours. Yeah. <laughs> it's aight. I'm just hoping it makes me sound sexy. Like, got a gravelly voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's that <laughs> sexy? Read- Was that sexy? It was. You did okay. <laughs> Do you want to start reading some of your poems and shit? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely well, not. Well, that's not happening. It sounds like Iggy Pop. Yeah, it sounded more and more like This is the confidential Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop. <laughs> well, Kelly and Murphy has a show on Radio 6. Yeah. Well, had a show. Yeah. It's like 2 a.m. Oh, really? <laughs> is he up or is it like pre-recorded? I think it's pre-recorded. Nah, man. He's just up. messaging Killian Murphy, you up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, what you doing? Hey, you up? <laughs> I've never, I have never listened to it because I am not awake at 2 a.m. Me neither. I am past On the BBC point Sounds app, though, for 30 days after it goes up. Uh, I, I, I don't work for the BBC Sounds app. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. just been found out that we're actual fucking snitches working for the BBC Ah, fuck the BBC. They yeah, keep coming after me. Fuck the BBC, big time. I'm not having it. I don't pay them any money to watch the telly, so they can suck it. Do you watch TV? Do you watch live TV? I do watch live TV, but you needed to use the streaming services. Nah, I thought it was if you... No, I can read you the letter. You can read me the letter if you want. But fuck them, I don't care. Just, like, come to my door. I don't answer it. I don't yeah. answer, like, my family. Yeah, like, no, the fucking TV license guys get any fucking luck in, in my goddamn house. British Bias Corporation. I'm not going on there. Fuck that. <laughs> Uh, I'm sick yeah. of them. Yeah, fuck the BBC. It's fucking a horrendous place to be. Radio Sex, though. Radio Sex Bangs. Yeah, yeah thank you, <laughs> Marianne Hobbs. Marianne Hobbs. Oh, imagine we got Marianne Hobbs on here. I would have to shut up. I would have to ask her a question that the answer lasted approximately one hour. Because I would just <laughs> want to listen to her talk. Like, she's just. <laughs> she's so interesting. And she's got the best voice. She does. I tweeted once saying that, uh, do you think Marianne Hobbs would phone me at bedtime to read me stories? <laughs> <laughs> she liked it. <laughs> yes! yes! That's your end, man. That's it. That's and I remember, I remember when I was at college, I tweeted something about Lauren Laverne, and she um, she replied back with three kisses. Oh, I was that like, is well, cute as fuck. I'm in there with the BBC presenters. Yeah, but fuck the BBC. Though. Uh, fuck the BBC. Marianne Hobbs is better than that, but also never leave because I love listening <laughs> to your show. <laughs> it is ad free because we are all supposed to be paying for it. Exactly. That's the thing that winds me up the most. The fact that the reason I I'm supposed to pay my T V license mm-hmm. is so that they can have like ad free. It's always whatever. it's always veiled behind like, oh no, we do this, like we you need to pay this because of the excellent broadcasting that we and all the educational services that we provide blah 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 blah. no nah you just don't you don't want to have a fucking advert for an iron on your fucking news channel speaking about irons oh here we go are you 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 see that born and raised mr cartoon iron you've talked about this iron so fucking much because i don't use an iron but i would use that one (laughs) (laughs) it's so cool (laughs) you own an iron do you have an iron board? Yeah, yeah, I got an iron board. But you don't have an iron. Oh no, I've got an iron. And the iron's under there, and then the iron board is beside the fridge. I don't have an iron. I'm a person. <laughs> I have an iron and an ironing board. I don't use it. I have two feet. I hop down the street. Yeah, but what's the point? Just, I don't care. The body heat's gonna take the creases out anyway. No point. I even thought of that. I have very high body heat. That's probably how. I mean, like my shit always looks horrendous anyway. Nah, you look good. Thanks, man. But that iron was amazing. I think anything that Mr. Cartoon does is just phenomenal. Yeah, you you have a real fucking hard on for that guy. Well, it's just he's just cool. I don't know who he is. He's like I a just tattoo know he does, like, airbrush shit. He does airbrushing. He's tattooed like loads of like rappers. Like he did like all Eminem stuff. He's done like Fifty Cent stuff. He's done like loads of other. Those are the two that the top of my list. By the way, <laughs> Eminem <laughs> and Fifty it. Cent. Nothing because else. this is the early two thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Encore just came out. No, he's done. He's done fucking loads of people's like tattoos, and he's really, really cool. Uh-huh. And he used to go like and do like backstage stuff and like do it at their shows and right, all that. Okay. And then that Esteban audio, like, he would go and he would do like the video for it. And they have, they have a studio in LA together. They had a studio in LA together. One was like it was like half tattoo studio, half photography studio. Right. Okay. Like Esteban audio was doing like 
music videos and photo shoots for like rappers and Blink One Eight Two and like rappers and Blink One Eight Two. Rappers and Blink One Eight Two, the exact same thing. Yep. Um, <laughs> but they're just cool. Yeah. Like they're. Just, you know, I think that's what I like in people. I just like people who are just like creative and don't really falter for like anything. You know, they're just like. No, this is my lane. Yeah, I'm they gonna stay in it forever. They stick to their own because craft. his son, he started like teaching his son how to do like airbrushing and all that right, kind of okay. stuff. Like he was on like a, a born and raised like ad thing, ages ago. It was and that's just cool. I just like the whole. I like the way that that LA culture seems to be thriving. You uh-huh. know, but I only see it through the eyes of like the born and raised thing. You know, I don't yeah. know what it's like in LA. My idea of LA is that where you go if you want to write a novel, be really shitty and just like do loads of blow like <laughs> that's what i thought it was in my head because <clears throat> that's always the stereotype that ellie's given it's yeah. where the it's the tr- where the tryhards go to be down and outs like yeah. that's that's what it feels like to me yeah um but like they have obviously just been they, they've shown that other side for me where it's like oh no it's just working class people that want to make money and live a good life yeah and i love that like also we really like like the powerful truth angels mm-hmm. podcast which is just another podcast where two guys literally sit down and talk shit for an hour. <laughs> but sometimes they get on guests who also talk shit for an hour. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what... I, I Not that I feel like I would fit in with that crowd because I don't know if I would, you mm-hmm. know? Like, they'd probably be like, oh, this fucking, like, try hard, you know? Yeah. Like, but I, 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 I love the idea that there's different groups of people doing the same thing all over the world mm-hmm. you know they don't do it because they want to be rich and famous they do it because they want to they want to just do it yeah and i love that I mean, <coughs> it feels so cool. right for them but anyway that i know it's 800 dollars and it's sold out jesus christ it's sold out an iron it's dope do you see like the dickies pants that they were doing as well no they're like dickies pants with like mr cartoon designs on it and oh, like, really? dickies shirts and they just started doing like three packs of like plain white t-shirts with just like BXR on the corner. And I'm like, I know they're from like LA. And I'm like, but that's the LA uniform. You yeah. Know? You think of like the LA like lowrider scene. You think yeah. of baggy white tees. You think <laughs> of like dickies with a crease. <laughs> and you think of like Vans Authentics. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. Yeah, big, <laughs> you know? big ass socks. Yeah. And then they're just like, no, no, that's what we're doing. Yep, that's, who that's we what we're doing. Oh, we are. Latinx that's yeah. what we're in yeah. <laughs> like, I fuck with it I fuck with it hard steering into the skids but I'm, also it's just it's just a culture it's what they grew up with it's cool yeah I mean you always talk about this kind of stuff and I just I follow along because I've got fucking never get any idea what you're talking about like I Have know you ever who, watched, like, I know who BXR is but that's Pardon the that? difference like I throw myself into stuff you know I'm just like I need to know everything <laughs> everything about this <laughs> Like, it's just cool. I just, I just, I really get on board with brands that I think the person behind it is a person. You know, I find it really hard to get on board with like all these mainstream like, like fashion brands, you mm-hmm. know, because I'm just like, I don't know who that is. <clears throat> yeah. But I follow the guy who runs Born and Raised on Instagram. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, I can see that that man is living a life, and obviously watching like Two Tone on Purple, Tr- Purple Truth, Truth Angels. Yeah, he's just sitting in his front room, just doing a drawing podcast, shit. drawing shit, just like with his dog that's like barely a dog. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just a guy. Yeah, and I really oh. obviously relate to that because we're just guys. You are a guy as well. Yeah, we're just guys, just chilling, like. I think the I think the the difference is like most of the kind of big brands that we know over here anyway, mm-hmm. they're all like the coffee. the fast fashion bullshit that we have that uh-huh. is just like rife throughout. Yeah. I mean, like I didn't really know anything other than like the high street shops until like I don't know. I started getting into like my late teens. Just like I, my idea of like fashion and clothing was just like you went to fucking yeah. I'll have some more. You went to one of the big fucking shops, like you went to fucking Primark or you went to, I can't even think of another fucking shop, H&M or one of these fucking things, you know? But it's like, and then, and then you kind of wise up and stop being a fucking idiot and you realise, oh, there's actually people, real life people that do this by themselves. 
Exactly. And unfortunately, these big fast fashion brands, most of the time they have people on like a social media team whose job is literally to flick through all of these independent markets, find what's selling. Like I, saw, I showed mm-hmm. you that like boohoo man thing. Yeah. They basically took like... Call a, out. <coughs> call they, out time. Yeah. Oh fuck Boohoo, they're shit. Like Boohoo man. They took a they, they took a born and raised design mm-hmm. and just straight up put it on a, a hoodie. They slapped exact it same. on a hoodie. All they did was change the text. The thing is That was it. The idea is not an idea that hasn't been done before. They yeah. literally put the like the LA like coat of arms yeah. on a T shirt and put BXR. Yeah. Sick. It but it's the same it was this yeah, exact and they same just changed color it and they just went, Oh, LA and they got eh. So bitch, like get rid of it. <laughs> Hate it. it. I just like, I like the i like, like, not to like keep harping on about that, but I like the idea of there just being people in the world who are down to earth creatives that actually do good. Yeah, you know, because it seems like born and raised do like RVCA. They always seem to do like good things. Like, like even like the hundreds back in the day, like mm-hmm. Bobby Hundreds was just like the man you yeah. know like he's got like so many different like like industries respect him for what he did you yeah. know I, and he's just a guy still you know he's just like a normal guy but i think it's what they the good thing that they do or the thing that they take to the advantage is the fact that they always make it like they always make sure that they're including their community and they always make sure that they have that at their core. Like, yeah. they care about and their people and the people around them. And that's how they make money. Yeah. Because they don't make them hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Yeah. They make it, like, like achievable. Like, it's obtainable. People yeah. can pay that. Like, some of the stuff is expensive, you know, but it is a business that has to make money and obviously it has overheads and it's got labour costs and it's got absolutely everything else. Yeah. So that it does have to make some sort of money. But we have but a very we have a very skewed idea of like what is affordable and what's not. Like we go to these like high or these big chain stores mm-hmm. and we see the t shirt selling for fucking eight pound. <clears throat> so you're like, Oh, that is how much it costs for a t shirt. Yeah. But it's not like Because like, the issue you is you buy big... that t shirt and then six months down the line it's got holes in every armpit yeah. and like it's got stains, it's ripping. The... It's low low quality and then also they're they're like massive fucking bulk buying. They're using fucking let's be real, they're using fucking child slave labour <laughs> in other countries throughout yeah, the, the world. The kids are cheap. <laughs> 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 they don't need much, do you know what I mean? But like so you look like the we have a very unfortunately skewed idea of how much things are supposed to cost so yeah. now like i'm very guilty of it because of the fact that that is like i said all i knew was a high street retail places so yeah. i was just like oh that's how much it is to buy a hoodie but then you go to companies that are obviously like not big massive high-end smaller companies still doing really well for themselves uh-huh. but then they understand how much it actually is to manufacture, to create, to design, like going through all of the bits and pieces just to get that hoodie done. Yeah. They need to cover all of that and then still be making some money off the back like, of it. The, there's a girl that Shanna knows. Shanna's got a couple of pieces from her stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's called Haley McSporn. That's just the name of the brand. Sure. And like her, her whole thing is like against fast fashion you know yeah, she yeah, calls yeah. it slow fashion yeah and she talks about how everything that she has is sustainable yeah you can buy <clears throat> three or four staple pieces for mm-hmm. your wardrobe yeah build around it with other high quality sustainable pieces yeah. you know and i think shanna's got a jumper she's got trousers and she's got like a, a cross body bag uh-huh. like she's got a belt as well and Haley made taiki here it made him uh a lead or a collar on a way <laughs> like leftover like material yeah, so he, boy. he's styling you're looking good but like her stuff is not overly expensive uh-huh. for what it is it's a very specific style right but it's good and she knows that it's good and she's very very honest about like she's done the like, instagram posts where mm-hmm. she breaks down the the cost of wear mm-hmm. so she's like it may cost x amount but if you break that down into days mm-hmm it's costing you this to wear it every single day which means by the time you get to this point and it's still lasting you that's free clothing yeah and it's such a good idea you yeah. know it helps people understand 
Absolutely, it, it's it's quality over quantity, and yeah. I think a lot of people don't understand that. I think the world's changing slightly now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are starting to look at value rather than looking at the value of things. If yes. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I know myself. I know I'm bad for it. Like, I bought a nice snazzy cardigan because I'm eight million years old, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I bought so I bought the cardigan, but it's like <laughs> it was expensive. It yeah. was like 115 quid for a cardigan. You know, a woolly cardigan. And I know I could have went elsewhere and I could have bought it. Yeah. But I know that if I bought that thing that wasn't as well made, mm-hmm. six months down the line, like, when it comes around next winter when I'm going to be wearing a cardigan again, I'll be like, mm. it's all out of shape. Ah, it's like, and it's got holes one. in it. Yeah, yeah. And if, it's, if it happens with this company, I'm going to fucking go through them. <laughs> but like, even with it, when it comes down to like boots, like, yeah. I, I like red wing boots. You, yeah. I, the pair that I got just now are the most expensive it's the most expensive piece of clothing I've ever bought in my entire life. Yeah. The boots were three hundred pounds. Yeah, But I mean, but, they they have been a staple in your wardrobe for yeah, years. So these ones that I've got, I've had them for three years now, uh-huh. two three years now. Uh huh. But the pair that I had before that, I had for six years. Mental. Like, and it it lasts. I remember the day I brought them home, my dad had just bought a pair of boots, and he was like twenty five quid at Marks and Spencers, and I was like. All right, and they're nice boots, and he does still wear them, but that's because he doesn't wear them all that often. Yeah. But I was just like, I know that these are high, high quality. quality everything. The only yeah. thing I'm going to need to do with these is get them resold at some point over the next year and a half, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're not going to last. They'll, they'll last me through this winter, but next winter they're not going to do shit, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have any tread on them whatsoever. Yeah. But that's not bad. Three years, and I have to just, like, get it resold. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I'll take that. And then everything else is still like intact, still work in order. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, like again, that's the other thing is like, with what you're saying about your dad is, as these like, because I mean like, your dad coming up, all he would have known was the local guys. Yeah. Because there absolutely. wasn't such, such a thing as like, massive fucking multi-millionaire com- uh, companies that yeah. sold everything. Like you look at Tesco, they literally do everything, everything. you can think of. Mm-hmm. Clothing, food, electronics, fucking SIM cards, petrol anything you can think of photos photo printing you can get a divorce in tesco how mad is that so all so your dad coming up would have understood the local guys and i, I if i need new shoes i go to the co- fucking cobbler <laughs> that's how old he is i go to the cobbler down the street <laughs> he, but, knew, he knew mr timpson he, <laughs> <laughs> but then obviously as the bigger companies started coming in we were all kind of indoctrinated into thinking that that was where we should go now. Yeah. Like, it's cheaper to go there, so we're better off going there. But actually, in the long run, it's costing us more fucking money because, like you're saying, we're needing to replace it all the time. So it's like it, when you go, a false you, go economy. Fucking, you go to fucking Primark and you buy five t-shirts and you're like, sick, that's me, man. Set, set good. And then, like, within six months, you're back in because you need to go and get new ones. So mm-hmm. it's like you think you're saving money at the you're, start. You have to buy ten t-shirts then because... You like those ones that you've just ripped to hell. Yeah. But these ones are quite nice as well. Yeah. You know, like, so you actually, it's a, a total false economy. You know, it, it's just, we, we've been programmed to think that cheaper is better sometimes because cheap means good value. Yeah. But it doesn't. It just no. means cheap. Uh, yeah. They, they tried to change the word of, of, like, the wording of it. To, to make it feel like you're getting a good deal you're still but getting, really you're just not no nah, you're just getting fucking swindled <coughs> like you're you're, the same thing you were saying about that um, that clothing company that you guys know is there's guys that I know um, they run their own like vintage store uh-huh. uh, it's like an online thing to do it's uh, Memory Lane uh, check them out on Instagram it's Mary, M- Memory Lane 92 they're they're fucking dead similar in that way um, they are so against all the fucking fast fashion bullshit all yeah. the stuff that they bring in like they go and like hand pick these pieces that they're selling on their their vintage store that's cool they're going in and making sure that they're getting like fucking top quality top of the line shit and some of the stuff that they get you just like how the fuck did you find that like some yeah. of the stuff that they're Sifting bringing out through charity bins you uh-huh. know it's tough it's absolutely insane but they're the same like they post a lot on their stories and stuff just like the the dangers and the um the shortcomings of the fast fashion industry um and how it is just like i mean they're burning tons 
and tons of clothing that doesn't get sold. Mm, absolutely. Well, they're just throwing it in a fire pit and they're just fucking setting it ablaze and just letting it burn. So all of that work that was done before for this fast fashion bill set so you could go out and buy a cheap ass hoodie, all the work that's went before of sourcing the materials, putting them all together, getting them shipped over from fucking Pakistan or wherever it is that they've got the fucking factory. Yeah. And then the actual like act of selling it in the shops all of that shit before has just completely went to waste because they're just burning it in a fucking island somewhere yeah and, uh, do you know what i know i'm still bad for it because there is still like companies that i like like i love carhartt you know what I, mm-hmm. I buy a lot of carhartt stuff yeah and i don't buy it all the time but i buy the stuff that i like from them yeah but the issue with companies like carhartt even dickies and stuff like that as well is that they are constantly bringing out new lines all the time. they're doing new collaborations mm-hmm. i don't know what happens with everything else the same as everyone else doesn't know you know but i can imagine that it's just sat there in a warehouse doing fucking nothing yeah know? but it how do you be. think all of these like vintage <coughs> clothing lines and stores always have stock of that shit because eventually they just go yo we're not going to sell this stuff we need to just go put it in a bin somewhere yeah and exactly. then they go and then it goes and gets pulled out and it gets sent it gets fucking sold by the vintage and second hand shops yeah and i think that the issue is that we try to convince ourselves sometimes that we're doing the right thing by buying these higher end brands yeah when really the higher end brands are just as bad they're as just doing the same thing that they're just putting a on. higher price mark on it you yeah. know but i just i think we almost convince ourselves oh, it's better quality i'm not going to burn through as much things but then you're supporting a brand that burns through so much <laughs> <laughs> it's really tough it's, it's really tough to we're having to navigate a really fucking weird time in life absolutely because we all want to do the right thing but what is the right thing surely the the right thing shouldn't bankrupt you yeah surely the bad the right thing shouldn't make you feel morally wrong for supporting some in some cases child labor supporting polluting the earth supporting literally all the other bad things that are going on yeah because it's just like there's so much shit there's so much shit just like surrounding us that you know is just like contributing to the bad shit that's happening in the world like we're we both have an iphone in our pocket fully yeah <laughs> we both have an iphone I and we're suckers because i've just bought a fucking new one i know I've you have just bought a new one your brother told me that absolute thing. fucking suckers i am um, i bought this thing why is my brother fucking telling you shit ross calm down i was cutting his hair mate i need i need things to say to him because i need to speak to him for an hour so don't take my shit away from me <laughs> but i was um i bought this and i was like right I'll buy, I, I bought it outright on finance. Yeah. And I was like, cool. That will last me because they're not going to bring out a new phone. I bought that last year. They've already brought out the 13. I yeah, was like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, they I, brought out three. They brought out a 13, yeah. a 13 Pro and a 13 Pro Max. What'd you get? The 13 Pro Max is a fucking pop tart box. It is, well, this is fucking the, This is the 12 Pro Max. Huge. It's massive. How does that even fit in your hand? That is a full blown tablet. Like, that is bigger than my fucking teeth. That is huge. Like. Oh, you can, like. You can bro, like, I don't care. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Okay. Ah, see, you can't even do it. I'm talking like, absolute uh, garbage. Absolute garbage. Uh, oh, it's not happening. Uh. Gary, stop trying to demonstrate. See, see but it took you five times to do that right. That's because you were watching me. I was under pressure. <laughs> see, like, oh, first time. <laughs> Boom, first time. I get to wherever I need to be, you know? And also, I, like, made my, uh. <laughs> I made my home screen. Like, these are all the ones that I use the most. So they're in the area, ah, that, you in thought the area about it. that my thumbs you are. Can, they can reach. Yeah. You thought about that? I did. I thought about it a lot. It's dumb. <laughs> I thought about it a lot. <laughs> it's so dumb. I hate myself. But <laughs> I did get the 13 Pro. So it is. I mean, my brother told me it's about the same size as the one I already have. Yeah. So I was like, kill that'll work, man. I can, I can deal with that. Because this is the XR. And he also told me that this was the worst choice out of all the choices that I made when I bought this phone. Because you made like, worst choices in that. The X, the XR, is apparently like the worst iPhone they've done since like the fucking six. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> so, and I, that's the one I got. I make the worst choices of all time. It's fine. It's my life, and I love it. Don't care. <laughs> I'm so fucking heated, man. Shit happened this morning. Shit happened this morning, and I'm still, I'm still up here. I'm trying to come down. And now I'm getting mad about fucking clothing getting burnt. Exactly. Ah, I'm mad. We're killing the planet. Basically. And we're all contributing. We're all contributing. We're all con- that's, that's what I was trying to say. We're, we're living in a... We're living in a very awkward time for this generation and the other kind of surrounding generations that we're in. We're constantly getting... 
we're getting caught in the middle of trying to make the right choice but we can't actually see where the right choice is anymore we have been told our entire life what we think is the right thing to do and what the correct choice is but all of it a lot of the stuff that we were told as kids and we were taught through the educational system was to benefit the people up on top like western medicine Mm -hmm. all bullshit western medicine was literally created by fucking the guy who created you know rockefeller Mm -hmm. the fucking big ass building in new york the guy that owned that rockefeller that guy mr rockefeller mr rockefeller i I can't remember his actual name but his last name is rockefeller he basically up until a certain point we only ever use like holistic medicines right yeah just like natural remedies from the earth because that makes sense right Mm -hmm. up until a certain point that's what we knew but then mr rockefeller used his money and his power to convince the u.s government to change the curriculum from the holistic medicine that was used in the hospitals and in the doctors Uh and switching it over to using his method not really his method but the idea of what we know as western medicine now so that's the thing like it was all it was all holistic medicine at one point and then it stuck you know something stuck and then that's why this guy is like obviously cashed in on it there's that quote what's the quote magic's just science we don't understand yet like, yes it's the same sort of shit you know like we w- the issue for us is we are part of a generation that is totally unique because mm-hmm. we grew up without phones and with phones mm-hmm. the generation before us didn't have those phones mm-hmm. the generation after us have those phones mm-hmm. the people who came before us thought a very specific way and it was obviously capitalistic mm-hmm. the people after us have their head now screwed on because they've grown up in a generation where they're told that capitalism is bad. Mm -hmm. We have found out that capitalism is bad. So we are in that weird middle ground, the grey area that is like just riding the line. Mm -hmm. We are totally riding the line. We go too far left, too far right, you're one or the other. You know? You're either all for or all against. But right now we're just like, God, we're in a we are at a point now where we want to do good. But Mm. Maybe financially that doesn't make any sense to us. So now we have to go for the bad stuff. But I know what I'll do in this this scenario. Yeah. I'll go and buy coffee yeah. in the coffee shops round about me because that's going to keep the local economy looking good. Yeah, that's, like, we, that's we how are, you rationalise the ethical choices in your own head. Absolutely. We are like such a weird generation. Like we... We're the greatest generation. Fuck everyone else. Because we, <laughs> we understand... We, well, I, mean, I'm, I'm, I know I'm being like tongue in cheek, but I do genuinely mean that because we are still having those arguments with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Everyone else is having arguments with us mm-hmm. that we are wrong, mm-hmm. or trying to convince us that they're right more yeah. than we are wrong. Yeah, and and we are just like, no, no, we are doing the thing that's right. Yeah, we're doing the thing that's right for us, which at the moment is all that really matters. I you guess know? like we kind of benefit from the 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 fact of what you're saying is we can we have experienced it from both sides absolutely yeah, so we yeah, can yeah, come I mean. we can come with that more impartial down the line sensibility rather than hard left hard right like you're saying we can come and kind of hit the middle but more left than right more left than right <laughs> we're basically living weird times the weird times are never going to stop no no there's too many there's too many very powerful rich white men yeah that run literally the entire fucking world. Or at least our part of the world that we see. Western the world. The Western world is fucked. We just we I mean we're Us all honkies have ruined it for everyone else. We're all concerned with like free will and making choices. But nothing none of the choices that we make, nothing that we do will ever affect the bad shit that happens. It doesn't matter how we vote. It doesn't matter how we talk to other people it doesn't matter how we protest it doesn't matter how we let our voices be heard shit is always just going to go in the way of the rich and the powerful absolutely until as long the as entire we do thing what we think is morally right uh-huh. and we can get to sleep at night fuck it you know fuck it works it. it's fine you're also going to have to edit this episode so much hey uh, because this has been clipping the entire time i've been you're, shouting you're so fucking I've heated. Been shouting. even back there it's clipping uh, oh my god 
Jesus Christ. I'm mad. It's fine. I know what I'm doing. Uh, anyway, I've been doing this. For, I've been doing this for long enough. Everyone sucks. Yes. Oh, he knows I was feeling bad. He does. You're all right. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> what was that noise? Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to oh. give a quick shout out to my Uncle Stuart just because I know he wants it. Yeah, go. thanks, Uncle Stuart. Thanks. I am doing well, by the way. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. It's nice it's hearing those kind of stories. Like, I've had a similar story. Um, like, we were talking about this before the podcast where people that we know separately um, will speak to us about the other person. So, um, I had somebody say something similar where um, they said... I think I would really get on well with Gary because I feel like I really know him and I really want to meet him. <laughs> it's it's like, so funny. This is just a dude that like, I know from like um, Emma's side of the, the fam. Just like, I think I would know. I think I would get on with him really well because I feel like I just know him now. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it because we don't really like, we don't really change who we are for this. And that's what my uncle was saying. He's just like, you're just two guys just talking about stuff. Yeah. You know? He says he swear, we swear too much and we burp too much, but it is what it is. Like, uh, Uncle Stuart We're not censoring ourselves for shit I kindly fucking disagree pal <laughs> <laughs> Anyway we're about to lose the older half of our, uh, of our listeners and start, Oh we definitely have We've been start... shit about them for the past 20 minutes <laughs> No I mean we're going to lose the older part of our generation uh, Of our listeners sorry Because we're going to talk about the playlist Noise Because this is the part that I know my dad cuts off at Because he's just like I don't know what you're fucking talking about Oh maybe we should Well I mean what does your dad listen to I feel like your dad would be a really big Bruce Springsteen fan I don't think he doesn't not like him. Does your dad like music? He likes the Beatles. <laughs> is this music? Yeah, my dad likes music. But that's music tastes all over the place. What about like Deacon Blue? Do you like Deacon Blue? He likes Deacon Blue. What about like Simple Minds? You just gonna mention Scottish bands exclusively? Yes. Well, yes to all of them. Good. Run Rig. Obviously. <laughs> he's been to a function. He's been at fortieth in the last ten years. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Yeah, music was big in our house. Like they like what like, kind of what kind of stuff was played in your house then? Like growing up, when you like woke up and on like, like a Sunday morning, they had a dad, radio on. What well, my dad's a radio playing? guy, so he just puts the radio on. So mm. it's like whatever has been on the radio. So that's why his music taste is so broad. Yeah. But like when he was growing up, he liked Bayside Rollers. He liked David Bowie. He liked the Beatles, Queen. Like you like bands like that, you know, like bands that were bands at the time. Yeah. But, we look at now as like old pop music yeah. but they were bands you yeah know? yeah they were the big deal me and my, me and my brother actually had this conversation last night um we were talking i can't remember what we were saying but we were basically just oh so david my brother shout out to my my biggest brother his son uh aiden my wee my wee nephew he was basically just talking shit about his music taste and my mom overheard and she's like, ah, how do you think we felt with yous growing up? And we both said the exact same thing. We were like, our music taste is all that motherfucker's fault. And we both pointed to my dad. Amazing. <laughs> it's true. Like, we do, I, I hate the Bay City Rollers, but that's because I'm a punk. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I met one of the guys from Bay City Rollers when I was working in the hotel. Uh-huh. It, was, it was one of them. I don't know his name. Leslie, is that his name, dad? One of the Rollers. Roller number two. And I went up to him and I went, oh, my dad loves you guys. And he went, son, everybody's dad loves us. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I, I, obviously, of course, yes. <laughs> I mean, like, I've obviously got my records just sat there. Mm-hmm. And, like, you can see how shitty my music taste is. Yes, because... Yeah, the first ones you can see over there is a Morrissey one. And you then, did that on purpose. You knew I was coming over. You're like, I'm going to have the Morrissey one sticking out so it makes Craig even more fucking mad than he already And then did. you look at the front of that. What are you sniffing? Get lost. And then, like, you look at this one, and it's Hank Williams Jr. Little Hank Williams! <laughs> you know? Like, my music <laughs> taste is everywhere. But then you flip through that, and you know you're going to find, like, you're going to find metal, you're going to find rap, you're going to find punk, you're going to find classical music. Like, there's everything. Like, yeah. It's just an amalgamation of everything that I've ever kind of liked in my life, you know? Yeah. And a lot of that obviously came from, oh, I like guitar music because the guitar music was played in my house. Yeah. Like, so see the, the Evian box that's there? Like, that's all my mum and, whoa, that's all oh. my mum and dad's records. All right, and okay. Like, oh, hello. Bro. <laughs> There's loads of, like, David Bowie in there. Oh, really? There's, like, the Eagles. There's an Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Nice. Thing. I think there's Queen. That is fucking Yo. sick. That's that's I, I've just we kind of got onto that conversation when we were talking last night, just like how much your like parents' music taste affects yours, because like I mean like I wouldn't I don't know if I would say that for like the generation of my kids because they have access to all music. Yeah, exactly. Before we had our mum and dad's 
records, tapes, and CDs. Like yeah, I still remember in the magazines. I still remember my playing my dad's. He had the Batman soundtrack. You know the nineteen nineteen eighty nine film with Jack Nicholson. Yeah, he had that soundtrack. Um, <clears throat> the one that Prince did on record. I still remember playing that, like uh-huh. on his record player and shit. My Just dad had uh, the Mavericks CD. Amazing. <laughs> and I just remember listening to that. I don't even know what it was called. Did the Mavericks <laughs> even have like an actual album? Every time I look onto it, it's just like greatest hits. <laughs> it was the one with uh, Dance the Night Away because that is a banger. Banging, banging. Just wanna dance the night away. I can imagine your dad like full hitting that salsa listening to that shit. With just the hips moving and stuff. And <coughs> swing. Like Harry's got moves, I can tell. Yeah, of course. He can swang those hips. Mm, swang them. Swanging. Swanging. Right, uh, who did you go first? Yeah. Well, let's, let's stop talking. So about I put this. on a song from an album that I Good. loved. Uh, the album was called The Machines We Are. Uh, by Dead and Divine and the uh-huh. song's called Neon Jesus and I don't know if like many people like this band but they were like I don't know like Metal Corey I think they're Canadian yeah like, kind of like Gwen Stacy yeah like kinda... riffy yeah. almost kind of southerny bits on yeah. there and I don't remember why but this song has been stuck in my head like for weeks when I listened to the album I listened to the album actually on the way back from yours last week nice um, I think we were talking about like every time I die and he is legend and all that kind yeah. of stuff and yeah. I think that that's what made me think about it um, but I just I love this song I love the guy's voice I love the way that the guitars are I love everything about it I remember when you you sent me this album like two years ago mm, like cause I, I'd never because it's one it. that I forget about and then go back to it and I'm like fuck this is so good yeah and I remember you sending me it and that was like that was at a point I think it was maybe longer ago actually and that was a point where I was like really hitting like a mental block on trying to like write new music yeah and then you sent me this album and it just kind of went here's a key I just yeah. unlock something and end up writing like fucking three new songs like through the next couple of weeks yeah I love that it's, it's one it, of those ones that just kind of like cause it's like you're saying it's kind of similar to Every Time I Die and, and He Is Legend and, and that kind of mm. side of music but it's coming from their own again like we were saying about Born and Raised it's coming into that kind of like industry or that genre of music with their own twist on it yeah. and their own idea of this is how we want to sound I remember I got given the CD to listen to so it must have been before like actual like streaming services mm-hmm. and uh, someone gave me a loan of the cd to listen to like, oh you love this yeah i did love it and then they ended up burning me like my own copy of the cd <laughs> and that's for, how i for got all it those kids that weren't born in the 90s this is what i mean like this is <laughs> we are that generation that's never gonna like, like those generations after us that are never gonna understand what that is like we went we went from even fucking taping songs off the radio yeah. to burning mix tapes for your friends mm. to downloading torrents and fucking lime wire and then we pay a tenner a month to, to listen to everything to listen to every song on the planet like if it's it insane. wasn't for lime wire i would have no idea who weird al yankovic is if it wasn't for lime wire our family computer would probably still work <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just a mess <laughs> absolute Just mess Trojan horse virus is coming from fucking every angle <laughs> but then the next song is again from the same era is uh, Eat You Alive by Limp Biscuit because it just slaps and what like, might be one of their best songs I love I it I love this song the music video was really weird yeah 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 I just remember like Results May Vary was such a strange album for them but it was it was great I love Limp Biscuit. I was talking to someone about this recently where like I think when I was like younger, I almost liked Limp Bizkit because it felt ironic. And then it got to a point where I was like, "No, I just love them." Like, yeah, <laughs> I remember I was on tour like ages ago with Burn the Sunset, and we were in a venue, and Limp Bizkit came on like just as like bands were like changing Set over, mm-hmm. and I rapped the entire song. <laughs> I just remember it's the whitest guy in the room. I remember the boy Chris that played in the other band just standing, just like. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I just fucking love Limp Bizkit. <laughs> is what it is. Like, I, I now know that that is who I am. This is who I am now. You know, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm absolutely fine with it. And this couple of songs are a bit different from that. Just, 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 just a little bit. Just so the smash. next one's a song called Blow and Smoke by a group called Homebrew. I can't remember where I found them, but I only found them recently. Right, okay. Um, The guy just has such a 90s flow. 
And I just, I, I absolutely love it. You're like, a sucker for 90s flows, man. I'm a sucker for 90s Just flow. 90s hip-hop. You know what? I like it when it bounces. And yeah, I, yeah, you yeah. don't really get that so much anymore. Like, yeah. I know people call it like mumbo and all that kind of stuff, yeah. which I understand. Yeah. But it's just triplets. It's just triplets that are really fast. Yeah. And it is hard for a lot of people to understand, me included, because I have a hard time actually remembering what the words are for rap songs. Yeah. But see if it's got a nice bounce, it's got a cool like kind of flow, I'm just like, Good here we go. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, riding yeah. that wave and yeah. I understand it. And it's really cool. The music's really cool. And I just think it is cool. Chef's Kiss. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, the next song is by a new band um, called Keep Quiet, Callum Doris, Jordan <clears throat> Spears of uh, Flutter Red fame. We love Flutter Red Big growing thing. up. Yep. Like, absolutely go back to them all the time. Yep. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, what a band. Can't Should've... remember what the name of the album was. With like, everything behind. That one. Yeah, like... I... <sighs> it's so fucking good. It's incredible, you know? And it Still was like, to this day. I remember it, feel, it being one of the first moments in life when I was like, oh, these guys are from here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was just like, these guys are singing about things that I am yet to go through but about to because yeah. they're only a couple of years older than us Yeah, but like it, that's enough nowadays for it to be the biggest jump you know yeah. I'm lucky enough nowadays to, to call both of them friends yeah. and I'm really really happy about that because they're such positive influences Callum especially Callum is just the most positive human being he's a ray ever. of sunshine I remember one time I bumped into him in Edinburgh Waverley Station mm-hmm. I was heading down south and I just bought a MacBook Right, okay. And he gave me the biggest embrace I've ever had. And I was telling him about this. And uh, he would give me this embrace. And he told me off at the same time because I didn't ask him for his discount because he worked for Apple. (laughs) And I was just like, I'm so conflicted. I'm so confused. I don't understand what I'm meant to be feeling right now. But he's just one of these guys. I don't speak to them awful lot. I bump into Jordan every now and then. Mm -hmm. Last time I saw Jordan, we had a conversation over a road because it was just too awkward to cross over. (laughs) It was like that. (laughs) Um, But every time I bump into them, every time I speak to them, it's just a real nice moment. You know, when I go away feeling fucking buzzing, I'm like, I need to grab a pint with those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it never happens, obviously, because we're all grown up. Because we're all life. Yeah. But they brought out this this EP. Uh, It's just the two of them. They did it over lockdown. And it's just phenomenal. So good, man. They they still know what they're doing. And I'm really excited to see them play some sort of show. Like... Because they still have all the energy that they used to have, you know, if not, like, now more energy than they had then. Yeah. Like, just because I feel like they've been a bit rejuvenated by it all, and it's just, oh, it's just brilliant. I actually kind of wait to see them do stuff with it. Like, yeah. It's so cool. Um, but yeah, Killed With Kindness is the name of the song. Keep Quiet, it's the band, and you should listen to them, because they are fucking dope. Uh, and the last song is just, I, again, don't know where this came from. <laughs> I was just flicking through, like, EPs. Uh-huh. Like, you know, like, at the beginning of, like, the Spotify thing, like, it's always like, ah, oh, jump back in, yeah, or, yeah, like, yeah. your top mix, or, like, all that kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure it was one of the albums on there, and I was like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. Uh, it's called Festival Song by Jeff Rosenstock, and mm. I literally just flicked through a couple of songs, like, didn't even listen to the full songs. Like, oh, that sounds cool. Oh, that sounds cool. That's cool. But it was different. And it was just like, ah. Oh, I'm going to listen to this. I listened to that one song and it's stuck in my head. I played it very briefly earlier on and it's already stuck in my head. <laughs> I was it's singing just it. Wild. <coughs> but it's, it's just good. I just like an album that you can just stick on and be like, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's on. I'm going to fucking... I reckon if I pain. listen to it a little bit more, I'll be like, oh, he's saying some really profound shit. But like, I'm just not there. You know, I'm just like, oh, that's music. Stick it on. That yeah. works. Yeah, yeah. It's great. But yeah, that's my choices for this week. They're, They're a bit good. all over the place, but... Pretty good though. I love them. Pretty good. Eh, right, I'll go. So my first one I put in is a song called Thoughts Prayer by JPEG Mafia. So this is from Peggy's new album called LP. Eh, and I will honestly say, you know I am quite a big Peggy fan. I will honestly say I think this is his best work. Mm. It, it terrifies me, but isn't yet endearing at the same time. And it's a fucking weird mix. So this song in particular... It's just like your classic Peggy style where nothing is really making any sense with like the actual beats and the music. Yeah. And then he starts singing Britney Spears with like crazy auto tune. Perfect. And it's fucking brilliant. See, we started singing that. I was like, this is really nice. I was like, is that Britney Spears? 
Like, it, like, cause he he sings like a diff- he sings the words, but he's using like a different melody, so you ah, don't quite clock it right okay, away. Yeah. So when you kind of realize, like, oh shit, that's fucking Britney Spears, and then you're just in it. Like it's ah, oh, it's fucking brilliant, man. So good. Uh, that whole album is amazing. I've listened to it too much. Uh, the next song is "Deeper Form of Sleep" by a band called God Complex, who I've just found out brought out an album at the start of the year, and then you've just told me that they then broke up a couple months later, which is yep. sick. Um, <laughs> this was a recommendation by our good friend Ross Began. He told me to go and listen to it, uh, and I listened to it quite a bit. If I'm being honest, it was just like I'd been listening to that Structures EP quite a lot, and I was like, "Yo, I don't really listen to heavy music anymore. Can anybody recommend me some?" And Began hit me with some good ones. So this was one of them that kind of stuck out the most, amazing, because it was just like anger. It's very like, angry for a man that isn't that angry gets mad not angry i love angry music mm. so that was that was a good one so to, that was that to fit in there the next one is a, a song called nightfall by the devil wears prada i have loved the devil wears prada for so fucking long but i like fell off of them after like whatever the, al- EP. whatever the did. whatever the album was with the tree on it that had like sassafras and shit on it big wiggly style that one dun, 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 that album dun. was ah fucking amazing but ever since then i kind of fell away didn't really listen to them that much i think everyone did though they were one of those bands that everyone was just like oh you could be big but you're not going to be so whatever yeah but this song nightfall is actually wild again this came off of me being like i need more heavy stuff to listen to and then our fucking another good pal jim gray was like yo the new devil rich prada ep is actually awesome so go check it out uh, it is actually really good the whole EP is fucking brilliant but this song is like the first one in the album and just the way it starts you're like cool I'm in cool <laughs> immediately and uh, the next one is Old Habits by an artist called Stanley Ipkiss uh, Stanley Ipkiss I I didn't find him he was doing a DJ set at they recently did a like a a doomsday in san francisco on halloween like the day that mf doom died last mm. year rip so they did like a doomsday event <clears throat> in san francisco and stanley epkiss was doing a dj set so i was like i'm gonna check this guy out because the stuff that like i was vibing to it over an instagram story so i was yeah. like i need to go check this fucking guy out so i looked him up thinking it was just beats but he actually has like rap albums as well like he does like hip-hop oh, albums and stuff That's so cool. he does his own beats he does his own dj sets he does his own like producing his own beats and then like rapping over him and stuff he just has this like he has a similar kind of like production music vibe as like um milo cool. like i kind of I, I i kin them together or like the kind of the stuff that milo's done with um kenny siegel one of his like guys that he collaborates with a lot um it had the same kind of vibe and his flow is just really cool um it was an it was one of those ones like you were saying like you just stick it on you're like cool i'm here like i'm just immediately fucking vibing out to this so i sent you an album like last week that you'd like just slap it on in the in the shop one day and it's just something that will just sit there and just create a nice atmosphere um that one came off of his ep that you brought it like two years ago uh, and I think he's bringing out more at some point soon, so that'll be sick. And then my last one is a song called Beat 100 by Benny Sings. Uh, so Benny Sings, I know him as the singer, the artist, but he has also been a beat producer for years, like wow. has produced beats for like hip hop, like well known hip hop artists and stuff, which I didn't actually know. No, I didn't know that, yeah. So he essentially has like demos and, and, versions of songs that he's had sitting for like forever mm. and was just like i'm just gonna bring these out myself it's just like my own beats and my own mixtape that's tape. cool i like and that so this is one of the songs that's come out of that and it's got our fucking main boy mark robbie on it so obviously i'm gonna listen to it yeah, it's, it's, it's a fucking it's a really nice song to just put on and, and another one to just sit back and vibe out so i'm looking for, he's bringing out an actual like full album mixtape of it so tape. Sick. i'm looking forward to that i think that'll be really cool i like benny sings like i like his music uh he did a song with mac demarco last year that was just fucking brilliant obviously he's got such a good voice as well like it's so unique it's very so, like high-pitched and almost nasally but yeah. it just it's perfect it works for the music that he like writes the, the, the cover of passion for it that he did like it's- fucking it's so Drake, good Drake's song fucking sucks dude yeah compared to that Benny Sings yo 
It's so sick. I ah. love it. So good. Mm-hmm. Well, we need to wrap up because I need to take my kid to our dance class. <laughs> <laughs> Parenthood. Ka-chow. But we made it. Uh, I, I have 10 minutes to get home and then to get to our class. So, cool. Uh, I'm going to go. Bye. I love you. I love you. Cheerio. Bye.